This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Change color. One day they would be bright blue, another day they would appear green, and yet another they appeared brown. I never knew what caused it, but it was a great device for grabbing my attention. Not only could I tell from his eyes that he was a healthy man, but also that his body was incredibly strong. Like a fine tool used for whatever task he chose, his body never seemed to falter or tire. Though I often saw him run, jump, gallop, and climb, I never saw him break a sweat. How he managed to stay so trim and fit, even though he ate and drank whatever he wanted, was a mystery. To him, a meal was a meal, and it didn't matter what it was or from where it came. He also used his eyebrows as a tool. He could control his eyebrows better than most musicians could control their instruments. Well, maybe not, but he could get a point across without speaking a word, just by wiggling one or both of his dark eyebrows. His mannerisms were unpredictably quirky, and his clothes were always the type that drew attention. Yet, he never, ever seemed to worry about what other people thought about him. Just about every time I saw him, he had on a different outfit. His shoes, when he wore them, were either an unnamed brand of boots or a pair of old worn-out sandals. I almost hate to admit it, but I actually miss the little irritating qualities about my eccentric friend. He was the most, how should I say it, free person I've ever met. He wouldn't hesitate to strip off all his clothes, hop a fence, and jump in for a quick, refreshing skinny dip in a private, off-limits, outdoor swimming pool. Although he was always polite enough to ask me if I wanted to join him, hopping a fence naked in the middle of November for an illegal swim was not my type of fun. He possessed many of the qualities I would like to have, and I envy him for being able to do these things with seemingly no concern, worry, or embarrassment. Having an opinion without being opinionated was a gift of his. How to do that remains a mystery to me. I know now that he just wanted me to think, to use my brain. Answering my questions with a question was an important part of his teaching method. That frustrated me many times, but it made me think for myself. I'm sure that's all he wanted. I'm not sure if he ever outright lied to me, but I know that he frequently stretched the truth. Whenever I questioned him about it, he would answer with truth. What is truth? And tell me, what importance does truth have anyway? Did you learn from the experience? Now that is important. And by the way, if I always tell you the truth, you might start to believe me. That confused me, as I always thought I was supposed to believe my teachers. I guess I was wrong. I can still see the sly smile on his face every time he knew he was totally confusing me. Confusion seemed to be my natural state when I was with him, especially in the beginning. I recall him saying, "Music, like life, and like you, is one entity expressing itself through its differences." My puzzled look let him know that I didn't understand. Music is one thing, he continued, but it wouldn't exist without its parts. You couldn't play a chord without different notes. Change a note, change the chord. Life is no different, and neither are you. You are expressing yourself in life by choosing different notes all the time. Learn to be conscious of your note choices, and life will respond with the proper chord. Or, in other words, life will respond accordingly. I didn't know what to say. He just smiled. He loved to laugh. I remember telling him about an invention I once saw called the lick blocker. It was a flat piece of board that attached to your wrist while you played guitar. It was supposed to block the audience from being able to view your hand, thus keeping them from being able to steal your licks. He laughed for a full ten minutes when I told him about that one. I'm glad I ain't normal, he would often say.
sharing is one of the most important tools needed for personal growth, he once told me, also stating that many people never come to understand that point. He said that many of us try to hoard our knowledge in order to...